Hello, my name is Amanda Coleman. I'm an intern here at the Baha'i International Communities United Nations office in New York City. Today we are with Daniel Perel, who's just come back from leading the BIC's delegation at the Rio Plus 20 conference in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Um, today we're just going to look at a few questions about what the delegation looked like, what areas we were involved in, what events we attended, and what our reflections are on the outcome document. Welcome, Daniel. We're glad to have you back. Um, we are so excited to hear about your experience at the Rio conference. Can you share a little bit about how the delegation went and who they were, what they were, where they were from, and what areas they worked in? Great. Thank you, Amanda. It's, it's wonderful to be back. Uh, it was a long trip. Mm. It was uh, an amazing conference, very large, and we were quite involved. Uh, we had 13 members on our delegation, ranging in age from 18 to 65. They were from five different continents. Uh, seven women, six men. It was a very diverse group and part of the reason for that diversity uh, was to make sure that <clears throat> we could cover as many areas as possible. Mm -hmm. So we had individuals following the discourses on youth, on women, sustainable cities, agriculture and food, corporate social responsibility, human rights, etc., etc. Uh, we also had some of us who were following the actual negotiations themselves and uh, <clears throat> trying to make head or tails of the, uh, of the high-level meetings as well. So we had a large delegation, a diverse dele delegation, but it was to try to, to maximize our involvement. Great, so interesting. So can you tell us more about some of the major events that went on there? What stood out? What was fun, exciting, interesting? Sure, uh, there were a lot of events, but I'll just talk about what, what we sort of sponsored and mm -hmm. what we uh, took charge of. Uh, in the preparation for the Rio conference, we drafted a statement that touched on three major issues. Uh, it talked about trusteeship, the elimination of the extremes of wealth and poverty, and consultation. Uh, we thought that these three issues were very relevant to the conference and timely, and uh, fortunately it turned out we were probably on the right track. Uh, we hosted a side event on the first day of the preparatory uh, committee and it was attended by over a hundred people uh, which was very good for the, the number of people who were there. It was on the elimination of the extremes of wealth and poverty in the context of the green economy. Mm. Uh, we also hosted an event with the youth where we talked about trusteeship in the context of sustainable development uh, and we talked a lot about what an ombudsperson for future generations might look mm. like, might be responsible for. Uh, it was really exciting and fun. There's a, a great energy coming from the youth. Mm -hmm. uh, and then <clears throat> we also learned halfway through the conference that uh, the peace monument, which was uh, given to Rio de Janeiro by the Baha'i International Community 20 years ago uh, in honor of the first Rio conference, was to be rededicated. Uh, so the mayor's office actually cleaned up the, the monument, uh, invited the, uh, the architect who put it together, and the secretary general of the conference, who is an undersecretary general at the UN, uh, and the mayor himself was there, and there was a really nice ceremony with a 46-piece band. Uh, it, it was it was really wonderful, very touching that they would uh, rededicate this monument. Uh, and then <coughs> uh, we had a couple of other opportunities. There was a press conference at which one of our delegates was asked to speak about uh, human rights from a religious perspective in the context of sustainable development. And we published a couple of articles in Outreach Magazine, which was a daily periodical that uh, was printed down there. So we did our best to, to coordinate a, a number of activities, and it was, it was really fun and, and interesting for us. Wow, that's great. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, I, so I know there's been a wide range of response to the outcome document at the end of the, of the summit. What do you have to say, and what are your impressions on this outcome document? Yeah, there's a pretty diverse range of opinions about what this, mm. this outcome document represents. Uh, but one thing I think the whole world can agree upon is, is it is an outcome of a very complex process of negotiations and, and disparate interests. Mm -hmm. uh, but all in all, it has a lot to say, and there, there are a lot of hooks on which we can hang a, a, a successful future. Uh, but even if the outcome document had been perfect, if it had written everything that every civil society had, had asked for, it would still be up to individuals around the world and, and leaders around the world to actually make the, make the words of the outcome document real, uh, make them affect our, our lives in a, in a real way and uh, help our pursuit towards global justice in a real way. 
Um, and so the, the outcome document is, is not bad, actually. I think that there are a lot of opportunities there, and there's a lot of uh, call for the participation, the further participation of civil society in, in uh, the future steps uh, in the field of sustainable development. And now, <clears throat> just with, like with any uh, UN document, it's up to us mm -hmm. to really make it real. Right. And, and I think we can do that with what's contained in the text. And so time will tell, but I'm, I'm optimistic that, that we will move forward mm -hmm. in, a, in a constructive way. Great. Thank you so much. Sure. My pleasure. Thank you.